day, good day, good day, everybody out there in Watch Repair Land. I'm JD. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit like. It helps support me in making my videos. And here today we have a Waltham Pocket Watch 15 Jewel, and it's in a salesman's case. A salesman's case has a crystal on both sides. So here I'm just taking the movement out of the watch in preparation for working on the pallet fork. So these are the uh, case screws here. I just unscrew the case screws. In this case, I probably could have used the screwdriver a little bit bigger. So make sure the size of the screwdriver is matching the screw properly. So in this case, I could have done that, but I didn't. So there. So that's one screw out, almost out. Loosen that screw up again and uh, get on with it. So this watch here has been giving me trouble for a couple of months now. I had to actually get another pallet fork and and the one I had before had a a guard pin that was just wrong right so this guard pin is used with the in combination with the uh, roller table to prevent the watch from overbanking. so I'm taking the second screw out now and now the watch movement just falls into my hands after pulling the crown out all ready for servicing so here I've got a Myers number 58 movement holder this is a very very uh, useful movement holder it holds all types of movements even down to small ladies watches so I'm just tightening the uh, watch in this movement holder so I can brace it to take down the power on the movement so to take the power down on the movement after I've put it in the Myers number 58 movement holder I'll get a bench key and that's uh, used to uh, turn the winding and setting mechanism and this is a simple job I'd say then the bench key is simply inserted and then you push the bench key in so that it, it interacts with the uh, crown wheel and then you just take a piece of pegwood to move the click sp spring away from the uh, ratchet wheel and then just let the uh, power down uh, on the movement from the mainspring and you let it down slowly so you don't uh, slip and then let the mainspring break from the arbor. Now what I really want to do here is put the hands in the right position so that they're not in the way when I put them in the Myers number 58 movement holder. So I've got to align the hands properly, put it in the movement holder and then it's ready to take the uh, take the balance cock out of the movement. So here just align that watch in the Myers number 58 movement holder and the hands are out of the way. Now with this movement holder, I think there's enough gap in there that the hands would not touch the movement holder on the inside, but as a safety precaution, I put the hands at three o'clock and I just ensured that uh, they're not in the way at all. Now I'm going to uh, take the screw out of the balance cock and just while I'm doing that, I put a little bit of pressure on the uh, top of the balance cock so it doesn't ride. So I just use my finger there, put the lightest pressure possible on the top, and remove the screw that holds the balance cock in place. Now after I've done that, I take my tweezers and I grab it just on the inside of the balance cock, as you can see in this, and tilt the balance just ever so slightly, and don't put a lot of pressure on the hairspring when you do this. And I'm just putting that balance aside for now because I'll be working uh, on the movement to take out the pallet fork. And here we go. Just align that nicely. Look at that. Looks good. Now there's the pallet fork with the bridge. So there's uh, two screws in the bridge. They don't go up very high on this pallet fork, but they go up enough for me to grab them with tweezers. And so I loosen one of the screws in the bridge and just remove it with my tweezers. I like to use the uh, brass tweezers because they won't make a mark. Uh, they're quite a soft metal. Uh, others like more precise tweezers, but I've been using these brass tweezers for many, many years. And take out the second screw, and guess what? It just There wasn't much screw in the plate, so it was able to uh, remove the whole bridge with the screw intact. So that's kind of handy, actually. So there's the pallet fork, the guilty pallet fork. Now I've got to adjust the safety dart on the pallet fork and we'll get on with that after the pallet fork's removed. So there's the pallet fork and if you can see that little safety 
safety dart with a little kind of bend in it, a U in it on the uh, right hand side, that's what needs to be adjusted. I elected to use my staking set to do this, so I have to find the right size hole and I have to put the pallet fork, uh, one end of the pallet fork in that hole, and this is so I can have the pallet fork nice and steady while I while I bend the uh, safety the safety dart on this thing. So I found the hole and just go down to the smaller hole size to see if that one fits right and just keep going down until the hole is too small and then go up one. That's how you size it properly. And once I size it, I've got to align the hole properly with my staking set and there's a stake for aligning the hole that you can use. Now I'm just uh, making sure I've got the right hole. There's the stake for aligning the hole that I use. And you just have to stick that down through the top of the staking set and generally line up where that pallet fork is. You don't need to touch the pivot on the pallet fork uh, arbor. Just line it up like that. Once you have it lined up like that, then you need to find another stake to actually um, go on top. But for now, it's generally lined, and I can take the alignment hole now and use, or alignment stake, and use that to uh, align the base of the of the uh, staking set uh, platform. So now, now that's pretty much aligned. I tighten it in the back and then put the pallet fork, fork back. I leave that stake in position so I know where the, what hole I, I had it in, and I confirm, yeah, that's the right hole, so I'm not wasting my time. And now I've got to uh, find a stake, that's the one there, to go over the top. And so I want to put a bit of pressure on top of that pallet fork to keep it in place because I'm going to be knocking that, uh, that pin over just a bit. The problem I had was the pin was too tight. So I'm trying to hold this in place. And as you can see, take another stake and just lightly tap that. And that allows me, that pin to move back just slightly. And that should help that uh, guard pin to get out of the way just a bit. So, so there we go. I've got the staking set. This is a very touchy job. And you do not have to knock it very hard. You just have to touch it just a bit. So that was done. Take a look at it. See how far back it's uh, gone. And if you need to adjust it some more, you go ahead. But in this case, I think I was good. And ready to try the pallet fork out again. See if I can make this thing work again. I need this better amplitude on this watch. Yeah, so the problem I was having here was um, there was the watch was over banking, right? So I wasn't sure whether uh, the, this guide pin that's on the pallet fork was too far away from the roller table. It's a single roller uh, on this particular movement, and I needed to move it a little bit further away. At first it was too tight and I was losing all kinds of amplitude so I wanted to move it away a bit so I wouldn't lose the amplitude. I did uh, find out later that I actually needed to adjust the uh, banking pins on this watch to make it work perfectly and you'll see that later. So here I'm just placing the pallet fork back in place. Um, that little darn screw on the top is still in place. It didn't seem to cause too much of a problem but I was able to uh, return the uh, bridge back with the pallet fork in place. So probably should have taken the screw out. It would, might have been an easier uh, solution for me than what I was doing here. Always make sure that the pallet fork is free uh, before you tighten the screws down. Otherwise it'll bend the pivot on the pallet fork and if the pivot's bent then it's not going to work properly. It's going to be uh, it's going to damage the uh, pallet fork. So here I'm just testing to see if it's loose and I'm looking really closely at that jewel on the pallet fork bridge to make sure I can see the pivot through the hole. I just keep adjusting it, and there we go. Now the bridge is in place, and I can place the screws in. And here I'm going to put the um, screw in place and tighten that up. So tightening up the upper screw on the bridge. Uh, and then the um, once I've tightened that up and snugged it, I test the uh, pallet fork to make sure it's still free. And then I get a second screw and I put a little bit of Loctite on that screw. It didn't feel like it had the grip it should have had. So, and I didn't want to have to rebore the the movement so or the plate. 
So I put a little tiny bit of Loctite which will help that stay in place without a problem. Um, so here I'm just screwing that back in place and I can feel that it's a lot better than it was before. And there, and tighten that, which is nice. Tighten this, make sure the second one is tight as well. And then make sure I test that pallet fork so that it's working. And now the pallet fork seems to be free and I need to wind the watch up to see if it's going to snap back into position. So here we go. I take the uh, bench key. You should have a bench key and I put that into the uh, winding mechanism and I wind the, uh, the bench key through the crown wheel and through the ratchet wheel into the mainspring and it's tightening the mainspring wrapped around the arbor. Now I've got that in place. I just want to test to make sure that the uh, pallet fork is snapping back and forth and if I check that out and you can see it snapping back and forth so that's working quite well and the last thing I need to do here is I need to put in the uh, full balance complete right with the balance cock so I do that by grabbing the balance like this you have the pallet fork on one side and you have it the balance go in with the jewel on the same side the pallet fork is in and then you rotate it just like I've done here and the, the jewel, the impulse jewel, will find the mouth of the pallet fork and start uh, start operating. In this case, it ran kind of weak to start off with. Uh, it wasn't running super well. And it turns out that uh, I ended up putting the screw back in here, but it turned out uh, not working, and it turned out over banking again. You'll see that in a few seconds. And the main problem was I needed to do a, yet another adjustment on that pallet fork. In fact, what I ended up doing was moving the pallet fork uh, dart, safety dart, um, more towards the mouth opening of the pallet fork. So it needed to be a little closer to the roller table to provide that safety that was needed. Um, and after I had done that, I realized that I needed to actually adjust the banking pins because the banking pins weren't working. There we go. See that? There the the pallet, the impulse jewels on the wrong side of the pallet fork right there. Then I got it going really well. So I just adjusted the banking pins after I adjusted the pallet fork again. Same kind of method and moved that, uh, the dart over and now the watch is running exceptionally well. And here's just a slow motion with my phone just to show you how much amplitude I now have on that movement. So it's way over 360 degrees. So we're, we're good to go and that's it. Thank you very much for watching my video.